morning. Good morning. Thank you, Bill. We're so glad that you're here with us this Sunday at Unity of Orange County. We like to begin with our mission and our vision statement. So our vision statement is centered in divine love. We joyfully co-create a world that works for all. And our mission is to awaken, inspire, and transform lives. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all those who make this service possible. We have Bill on piano, and we have Tom doing our sound, and Christopher is operating the camera, and we have John and Waverly and Matthew doing the video, and Reverend Allison is doing the meditation. Today at, excuse me, today at 11 o'clock is our town hall meeting. Please join us, especially if you're a member of this church. Uh, the Zoom number is 828-4466-5106. And that went out in an email on Friday, if you're on our email list. And this Thursday, the 20th, from 6.30 to 8, will be a workshop called Writing Your Legacy. It's an opportunity to leave something to people behind about your life. So that's going to be also on Zoom, and you can find that Zoom number on our calendar. And then next Sunday at 11 o'clock, the 23rd, is our Summer Book Club. And the book we're going to do this time is called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. This is a short, illustrated book. You don't even have to read it ahead. We're actually going to be reading it and discussing it. So um, join us. It's a wonderful book. It's short, but it has a great message, and I think you're not going to love it. And so remember that if you're buying things on Smile, I mean on Amazon, to go to smileamazon.com and put Unity of Orange County, and we get a small portion of whatever you spend as a donation. Also remember to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. And remember that if you want to give a monetary gift, you can do it by text at 77977 and put Unity of OC Give, or you can go on our website, or you can send it by mail. And so now I would like to introduce Reverend Allison. Good morning. The daily word for today, Sunday, August 16th, 2020, protected. I shine my light and I feel protected. Feelings of fear that creep into my life may conjure childhood memories of scary nighttime images and noises. As a child, I may have felt afraid of the dark or startled by an unfamiliar sound. But the morning sun always dispelled the darkness and I realized that there was never anything to fear. I keep that knowledge alive as I let the divine presence within me dissolve the darkness of the fear and shine the light of comfort and safety. Now, when any darkness descends in my life, I remember the protecting love, presence, and power of God expressing as me. As I attune more fully to this divine nature, Light draws within my consciousness, and I realize that God's protection is always mine. And the scripture this morning is from Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And I invite you now to just take a moment and prepare for our meditation. Just find a comfortable seated position and just relax into the moment. And just slowly begin to take those healing breaths. And as you do, just relax deeper into this moment. And now, think about this concept of fear. 
I like to use an acronym that is false ev evidence appearing real. So when we think about fear in this manner, we cannot be afraid. So reminded of the scripture, then we can say to ourselves, of whom shall I be afraid? And now take a moment and change that acronym again and make it face everything and rise. If you're confronted in any way by any fear at any time, just take a moment and remember you have an opportunity to face everything and rise. As you just come deeper into that silence, let that light, the light of dawn, begin to shine within you. Remembering that the light dispels any darkness, and that light is ever present within you. And then as you go into the silence and spend a few moments in meditation, think of this centering thought. I shine my light and I feel protected. I shine my light and I feel protected. I shine my light and I feel protected. Thank you, Bill. That was beautiful. 
Beautiful. Good morning. Good morning. Today we're going to talk about a topic near and dear to my heart only because it's something that I'm constantly having to learn myself. And it is that it is not the problem. So what does that mean? What is it? Well, it is anything outside of ourselves that we blame for our unhappiness in our life. It could be a relationship, it could be a virus, it could be a job, it could be the weather, it could be the fact that somebody cut us off in traffic. And all of that stuff just gets on our nerves and we think that that is what the problem is. But there's a spiritual book I love and they say that the spiritual axiom is, is that when anything bothers me, the problem is me. Or another way to look at it is when I'm pointing out there and saying this, this, or this is the problem, the rest of the fingers are pointing at me. So I have to look at my attitude. I have to look about how I'm thinking about this. Now, in unity, our third principle states that the thoughts that we hold in mind produce after kind, meaning we create our world. So if things aren't going well in our world, we have to change it. Now, I understand that there are some things we can't change. COVID, for instance. I mean, we can wear our masks, we can wash our hands, but we can't, come, well, hopefully someone can, but we can, most of us can't come up with a cure. But it is our minds and how we deal with the problems that is really the solution. And this is not just a unity thing. Um, the Buddha said, the mind is everything. What you think, you become. And Ramakrishna, which is an Indian mystic, put it this way. By the mind, one is bound. By the mind, one is freed. He who asserts with strong conviction, I am not bound, I am free, becomes free. And William James, an American author, wrote, the greatest discovery of my generation is that a human being can alter his life by altering his attitudes of mind. And for those even in the business world, Zig Ziglar, who is a big sales motivational expert, says, your business is never really good or bad out there. It is either good or bad right between your ears. You can get everything in life you want if you will just help enough people get what they want. And Ralph Waldo Emerson said that the Great men are they who see that the spiritual is stronger than any material force, that thoughts rule the world. So I know all of this, but it's not always easy to do this. You know, I sometimes think that people come to unity or any new thought, and they really like, thrilled by it and they feel great and then they realize that one of the principles is that they determine the quality of their life and that's pretty scary because that means that if I'm unhappy or something isn't going right in my life I don't have anyone to blame it's so much easier when you can blame other people it's so much easier when you can blame politics or the government or this or that but when we are so wrapped up in how the outside world is doing it to us, we forget to see what we can do to change our attitude. And when we change our attitude, we begin to change the world. Now, the mind is so strong. There was an article in the London Daily Mail some years ago about, this is so, quite a few years ago, about the death of a tennis star called Jem Gilbert. She was a British tennis star, and she died as the dentist was about to extract her tooth. So the story is that years before, when Jem Gilbert was a small girl, she had gone to the dentist where her mother was to have a tooth extracted, and a most unusual and tragic thing happened. The little girl, terrified, watched her mother die in the dentist chair. What happened? Her mind painted an incredible, indelible picture of herself dying in the same way. The picture became a mental reality. Jem carried it in her mind for 30 years. This fear became so real that she would never go to a dentist, no matter how badly she needed treatment. Finally, there came a time 
when she was suffering such acute pain, she finally agreed to have a dentist come to her home at a seacoast place to extract the tooth. Her medical doctor and her minister were with her. Jem sat in the chair. The dentist put a bib around her. He took out his instruments, and at the sight of it, she died. And the writer remarked that Jem had been killed by 30 years of thought. So our thoughts can kill us, and our thoughts can heal us. And what happens is we don't realize that. We think, well, it's just a thought. And we try sometimes to change that thought. And we use affirmations, which are great. We use denials. But we don't stay at it long enough for that change to happen. Jem spent 30 years in that negative thought that going to the dentist was going to kill her. And yet we expect things like healing to happen in two minutes. You know, we go into the silence and we say a few healing affirmations and then we can't figure out why we're not healed. But it's interesting that Myrtle Fillmore, one of the co-founders of Unity, spent two years in meditation healing her physical condition. So we have to remember that the brain is so smart and it is so strong that every day, every day when we wake up, we have to decide how our thinking is going to be. William M. Peck said, your morning thought may determine your conduct for the day. Optimistic thoughts will make your day bright and productive, while pessimistic thinking will make it dull and wasteful. Face each day cheerfully, smiling, and courageously, and it will naturally flow that your work will be a real pleasure and progress will be a delightful accomplishment. So this thing about choosing our thoughts is, sounds so easy, but it's really not. Be if it was, we would all do it. I mean, we often think, OK, I'm going to wake up in a great mood, and, and then something happens early in the morning. We, number one, we make the big mistake of turning on a TV <laughs> and the news. Let me tell you, folks, that is a downer for the day. Another thing we do is we attach ourselves to the news. We sit there hour after hour watching it. I'm not telling you not to cruise the news to kind of see what's happening. But when we sit there concentrating on all the negative thought that comes out of our TVs and radio news and all of that, we begin to get depressed. We begin to think it's useless. We begin to think, well, we might as well get up because there's no hope. These things are never going to change. We have to change our thinking. If we don't change our thinking, we aren't going to be able to change our life. Joel Olstein has a story in his book about his sister who um, had a really terrible marriage, his sister Lisa. And she was really upset, and she could have easily have given up on relationships. But she refused to let that bad relationship change her life. She refused to let it get to her. And so she began to think positively and pray. Well, she's a member of Joel Olstein's family, so that explains probably why it was pretty easy for her. But she kept praying about it and thinking positive and not allowing this thing to happen. And then a couple of years passed, and she met Kevin, who was her current husband, and she has this fabulous relationship. That is so much more productive than the person who, uh, we have a friend of ours in Florida who met this woman he hadn't seen for years, and he asked her, he says, well, how are you doing? And she says, oh, I'm just so depressed, I'm so miserable, my husband left me, life is terrible. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. When did your wife leave you? And the, she says, eight years ago. Now, eight years ago, and he's still carrying this around. You know, at some point, we have to change that thinking. We have to realize that anything is possible, but we have to change the way we think. When we think we can do something, we can do it. When we think something isn't going to happen, guess what, folks? It's not going to happen. If we think that this COVID is going to go on and on forever, the collective consciousness of everybody thinking that is making it come true, as opposed to thinking that there are people out there that are creative, that are intelligent, and they are going to come up 
with a cure, a virus, or whatever, a vaccine, because we know that God works through people and that God is working for those scientists who are trying to find something. So there's a movie called Into the Wild, and it's about a young man who decides to give up on society and go out into the wild and live amongst nature. So he gives up everything. He gives up all his belongings, his wallet, whatever, and he goes off and he lives in nature. He travels all over. And during his travels, he meets a man by the name of Ron, an elderly man. And Ron's family had died in a car wreck. And so this man has spent years, years, just stuck in his house, doing some leather work, not going out, kind of how a lot of people are right now. And he's there, and he hasn't done anything with his life. And he gives the young guy a ride to this mountain. And this is the scene to show you how strong the mind can be. Alaska! Son, what are you running from? You know, I could ask you the same question, except I already know the answer. Oh, you do, do ya? I do, Mr. Franz. You gotta get back out in the world. Get out of that lonely house, that little workshop of yours. Get back out on the road. Really? You're gonna live a long time, Ron. You should make a radical change in your lifestyle. I mean, the core of man's spirit comes from new experiences. And there you are, stubborn old man. Sitting on your butt. Sitting on my butt? Yeah. Ha! I'll show you sitting on my butt. Stop it, old man. I'll show you. Come on, then. Come on. Sitting on my butt. Ha! Yeah. Come on, old man. Come climb it. Sitting on my butt. Come on, keep going. Ah. <laughs> ah. You're doing great. <sighs> keep going. Keep going, Ron. Yeah. Can anybody see this? God, are you watching this right now? <laughs> Yeah. Uh. You all right? Ah, yeah, a little bit, <laughs> bit <in the> head. <laughs> uh. Uh. So are you sitting on your butt? Are you just saying that, well, everything is the way it is because the world is the way it is and blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to be depressed. I'm just going to be miserable. Do you know that in the Bible it says 800 times that we are to be glad and rejoice? 800 times. You think it's trying to give us a message? This is a matter of how we think. We can think positive thoughts, we can be glad, we can rejoice, or we can think negative thoughts. I don't care what the outside thing is. I have to do this myself. You know, I had the hip surgery and that went great and then my foot went. So it's really easy to get into self-pity and self-depreciation and feel all of that. But we don't make any progress in our life. We don't make any progress up the mountain. We don't make any progress in feeling glad and rejoicing in life if we sit there with the negative thoughts. So how do we get out of these thoughts? Well, one thing is we have to ask ourselves, what can we do? You know, sometimes we have a choice to make a positive change in our life that's going to change our attitude. You know, there was a wonderful prayer, the serenity prayer, and it talks about, you know, the ability to accept what we cannot change and the courage to change what we can. Well, folks, we can always change something. 
And what we can change is our attitude to whatever is going on in our life. When we change our attitude, we change our life. You know, William Dyer wrote a book, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. This is so well known in all religions. And so we sometimes think, in some religions, or some people think that God wants us to be unhappy. You know, he, that he wants people to be miserable. So there's a story. So I want you to imagine that you are God. And you created the heavens and earth to play and experience yourself and so on. And you decide to drop down to check on your creatures. So you ask the first creature that you see, how are you doing? And the creature responds, what do you mean, how am I doing? God says, well, do you like it here? No, I don't like it here. And God says, well, what's wrong? Well, the tree is bent in five ways, and I want it to be straight. This person went out with someone else. That person ran up a $100 bill, phone bill. This person did this, and this person did that, and it's just terrible. Plus, my nose is too big, my ears are too small, and my toes are weird. I'm not happy with it altogether. And furthermore, I want to be rich, and I'm not. I'm just not happy altogether. So God says, well, what about the animals? The animals, the ants and mosquitoes, they bite you. It's a terrible thing. I can't go out at night. There are all these animals out there, and they poop all over the place, and you step in it. So after a while, God gets a little tired of all this. I mean, wouldn't you if you asked someone and they answered you that way? So he leaves, and he says, I'm not a complaint department. And then he goes, and he visits someone else. And again, he asks, so how are you doing? And they say, I'm ecstatic. And God says, wow, that's wonderful. Well, how do you like things? They're beautiful. Everything I look at just causes waves of ecstasy. I look at that bent tree, and it just blows me away. That ant comes and bites me, and I think, it is so neat that an ant bites me, and I can feed that ant. Now, you tell me who God wants to hang out with. Who wins the prize? God is joy, ecstasy, consciousness, and eternal bliss. God is not depressed. God does not want us to be depressed. God is as high as they get. So God doesn't want to spend time with us, and God loves everybody, but he doesn't want to spend time with us. Who else does? I mean, have you ever thought about it? Have you got any friends that every time you talk to them, Everything is terrible in their life. I mean, it doesn't matter what's going on. Everything is terrible. Don't you get to a point where you don't even want to talk to them? You just want to, you see their name come up on the phone and you kind of let it go to voicemail and then maybe you send them a text in response because you just don't want to hear this because guess what? That brings other you down. Just like someone with a positive attitude lifts up the world, someone with a negative attitude brings people down. Happiness attracts more happiness. And how we get that happiness is not by changing everything in our world. It's by changing our thinking about everything in our world. Things are going to happen. People are going to cut you off. People are going to get sick. People are going to die. People. You're going to run out of jobs. You may not have a job, or things like that are going to happen. But it is your attitude toward it. If it wasn't your attitude, during the Depression in the 30s, everyone would have been depressed. But many people succeeded during that time. It is our thinking that determines our life. So I want you to close your eyes for a minute and ask yourself honestly, how is my thinking? Am I depressed because things in the world maybe aren't the way I want them to be? Maybe my health, is there's some challenges. Am I just sitting on my butt not doing anything? Or am I asking, what can I do that is positive? What action can I take? Sometimes when we change action, we change our thinking. We get out of ourself. We get out of that self-pity. We help somebody else. We're service. We do gratitude lists and see 
all the things that we have to be grateful for. You know, 90% of our life is good. But we take 90% of our time and spend it on the 10% that isn't. So my challenge for you this week is spend all your time on the 90% that is good and see if your life doesn't get even better, that you don't feel more joy, more ecstasy, more happiness, more well-being than you did before. Try it for a week. If it doesn't work, you can get a refund on your misery. <laughs> and so we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all the blessings that we have and the ability to know that everything we need, we already have. And so it is. Amen. so much. Here at Unity, we believe that we have five basic principles that we believe in, and we like to affirm them each week in case we have uh, mental fog and we forget what we believe. So the first one is God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. And I am naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. And I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. And four, through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. And five, I do and give my best by living the truth that I know I make a difference. And we do make a difference. We make a difference in the world by having a positive attitude. We make a difference in this church by supporting it, by liking the channel, subscribing to our channel, and also by your donations. And we try and make it easy for you so you can text your donations um, to 77977. You can go on our website and donate there. You can download our app. You can go there or you can mail in your check. Any way you send it, we appreciate it. And remember that we're having our town hall meeting at 11 o'clock after the service. And again, go get a pencil and write this down. The Zoom number is 828-4466. Five one oh six, And if you want to find out what's going on at the church and what we're doing, because, you know, it changes daily in today's world, come on and join us on our town hall meeting. So get a quick something to drink and come on back to your computer and join us for it. And now let us close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, 
God is, and all is well. Thank you, God, and so it is. See you at the town hall meeting. Have a great week.